Let's see all the breakfast and plus CV Africa. We stay with the conversation. I mean, uh, looking at the APC and the fact that you have not in governors, or the APC is saying hey, we're going to shift powers to the southern parts of the country. That will be the crux of our conversation this morning. We have a guest joining us, Opener Bonkatara. He's a public affairs analyst and a political affairs um, a commentator, if you like to say. Open up, boys. Good to have you join us this morning. And good morning, Nandir. All right, then. Northern governors elected on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, APC, have insisted that they would have uh, or back a Southern narrative emerge as a presidential candidate of the ruling party in the 2023 general elections. The chairman of the Northern Governors Forum and governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong stated this while briefing State House correspondent in Abuja. The governors, 13 of them, made their position known following their meeting with President Mohamed Buhari at the presidential villa uh, at the federal capital territory. Now, in the briefing, Governor Lalong clarified that the leaked memo that went viral on Saturday was true position of northern governors, and they came to official, officially to consult with the president. According to the governor, President Mohamed Buhari has not anointed any of the 23 aspirants expected to participate in the party's primary as the flag bearer of the APC. Rather, he explained that the president asked the governors to have a meeting with the National Working Committee, that's the NWC of the party, to resolve the issue of consensus candidate through a democratic means. You also have, uh, prior to this time, where you, you have our guests saying there's been a transfer of power by the National Executive Council to the National Working Committee to actually elect. Now, Governor Lalong stated that the decision of governors to return power to the South was to ensure equity, peace, unity in the country. Okuna Bonkatara is with us this morning, a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us. Okunabo, do you see this becoming a reality with all that's going on with the APC right now? What becoming a reality? That, you know, power would be the northern governor supporting a shift of power to the southern part of the country. Not necessarily stating whether power should go to the south-south or to the southeast or to the southwest. Well, you have a cacophony of voices. Um, occasion by contending and competing interests. The Northern governors have, have retreated on several locations that far more shifted to the south. And that is in consideration of the tenuous litigations of the engagement called Nigeria that uh, have never been so threatened. And so in the interest of equity, fairness, and justice, like Lalong said, far out to shift to the south so that there will be this sense of belonging, this sense of oneness. Um, but you have a conflicted person, such as Adamu, who came, who addressed the NWC of the APC and said to them that, uh, uh, what's his name, Lawa, the Senate president, is the chosen one, the anointed one, by Mr. President. Although Mr. President has come out to controvert that, that he has no preferred candidate, or he has no chosen, he has not anointed. I cannot say he has no preferred candidate, because on the sister station, he said he has a preferred candidate, but he was not going to disclose the identity of that candidate for the safety of that candidate. And as a human being, of course, we all have preferred candidates. My candidate, I've always said, is going to be the candidate. But uh, definitely the candidate for uh, the APC chairman at Amo is the Senate President Lawa. And so he was more or less trying to point. We are here to um, ascertain the veracity or apocryphalness of that claim. And that will be Mr. President coming out to contradict it. But the NWC, in the sweet response, has also said, uh, there was no decision like that by the end of this week. And that was the opinion of just one man. And that they stand, they are, they are in sync with the position of the government that power to shift to the, to the south. Now, the danger of the not retaining power uh, is, quite, is quite obvious, you know, because 
uh, like I said, you have the IFOB, you have agitations that have assumed apocalyptic dimensions, uh, occasioned by the issue of uh, segregation, issues of segregation, uh, marginalization, discrimination, and what have you. The PDP has a northern candidate, a northern standard flag bearer, standard bearer. Uh, the PDP could be excused in the sense that they could argue that Jonathan, who was the last PDP president, is from the south, not just south, south south. But what would be the excuse for the APC? There won't be any alibi because the sitting president who is a member of the APC is from the north. And so it is only logical at this point in time, and the interest, in the interest of oneness, unity, that power should shift to the south. That is the only logical thing to do. And that is what the northern governors, 13 of the northern governors, are insisting on saying, um, yeah, yeah, Bello. 13 of them have said, let it go to the south. And I think it should actually go to the south if we want this country to remain as one, because this has gone to further threaten. It is quite insidious. It has gone to further threaten the very existence of our nation. Don't forget that, yes, you might have a standard bearer from the north, from the APC. You might think you have won, but what of the domino effect? It might commence immediately, one year after, or two years after. And to stave off this ominous <coughs> threat, the northern governors are insisting on the southern president. And I think that is the best thing to do. Because if you talk of now, the fear is that you need a northerner to uh, if you have to win at the court, you need a northerner to be the emerge as the standard bearer of the party. That argument suffers from echoes of vision and poverty of blood. First, you need a spread. So if the South will say, we are not going to support a northerner, even if you have majority of the votes you, and you don't have the spread, you cannot be declared a winner. So why, yes, you talk of majoritarianism, you talk of majority, you talk of the North, but the North cannot be unilaterally. You need the support of the South to emerge. So no one region, no one zone is insignificant. All regions and every, uh, all zones are equally, equally, I said, equally significant. So if you give it to a North, like now, the Southern, the Southern governors, 13 of them are in support of the Southern country. What does that tell you? That those 13 northern governors are going to ensure that they work for the success, towards the success of a southern candidate at the general election. That is the meaning of, of, of that. So if you talk of the northern majority, it does not even arise. Because those governors will give their votes to the south. And that will reduce the votes of the northerners, even the votes of Atiku. So the issue of Atiku is not the candidate, he has the cloud, he has the number, he has this. So if we don't give it to the north, then Atiku will pick the, the APC candidate at, at, at the general election. That argument does not even arise. Because already 13 northern governors have said we want the south. And the 13 northern governors will work assiduously to ensure that the southern candidate emerges as the president come 2020. My advice to those northern governors is simple. Tell your delegates, when they go to the polls, to vote for the southern candidate. It's as simple as that. All right, we'll quickly take a track now. Yeah. Can I yeah. please stay with us? When they go to the convention, they should vote for the southern candidate. As simple as that. As simple as that. Okuna Bonkatara, we'll be with you shortly. Let's quickly look at this track. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Our meeting today is to reaffirm our position that in the interest of unity, in the interest of peace, and also justice, we recommended that the next president should come from the south. The governor of Kogi State chose to excuse himself from meeting with Mr. President uh, because he believes that uh, he does not agree with our position. There are 14 APC governors 
in the, out of the 19 northern states. 13 of us are on one page on this subject, and we all came to see the president. But the, the governor of Kogi State excused himself, and it is within his democratic rights to excuse himself. We look at the totality of the issues in our country. We believe APC with 22 governors, APC with a president that has delivered on democratic dividend across the breadth of this country has everything going for it. What is the political brinksmanship that we need to bring so that every component of Nigeria will feel important? Uh, like I said, there are northern candidates of northern extraction and we are not ignoring their capacity or their interest, but we felt that if political expediency can encourage a step that will bring more peace and resonate with everyone across Nigeria, we are bold enough to see it. Ms. Nkotara, um, you've listened to that. Um, if you heard what those um, uh, uh, members of the party said, what, what are your thoughts on that? What are my thoughts? I mean, I just said, I, what, what they said, they corroborated what I've been saying. All right. I, in the interest of peace, unity, fairness, and justice. That's what I've been saying. And they only corroborated what I've just said. I mean, there's nothing different. All right. Especially when it goes, you know, you know we, we, our political engine is overheated. And the nation is headed slowly but steadily. Just on Sunday, we had what happened in Owo. The nation is there slowly but very constructively preventable with China. And that is what is in the hands of who are low centric. Excuse me, they are trying to stable. That is what they are trying to prevent. Because we are almost, almost, almost at war with ourselves. And this will further test time. When a section of a society believes that they are not wanted, when they believe that you have this northern hegemony, of course, you know, and like I always say, every spirit revolts at tyranny. When a man is pushed to the wall, he bounces back with his double leg. And you know what that means? When a man bounces back with his double leg, he throws a ball and ricochets. You know what that means? Of course, it is not, it is not going to be a child's play. And that is what the southern governors, who are clairvoyant, are trying to avoid. And that is why we say, let it go to the south. There will be that oneness. There will be that unity. The PDP has made its mistake. Like I said, it has an excuse. Jonathan was a southern president. Okay, fine. But let it be a fair contest between the north and the south. And let Nigeria decide. There has to be a choice. Are we going to go for a southerner? Are we going to go for a northerner? You know, we should have that choice. Nigeria should have that choice. Not, not, not. So you are between the devil and the deep blue. The, there is, there really, is, really, yeah, open up, Oko there, there is, there is a school of thought. Oh, yeah. But I, yeah, there's there's a school of thought that um you know the PDP haven't taken a, a northern candidate, someone from the northeast in the person of uh, Tikodu Buaka, who is um uh they were Turaki Adamawa, is it the Razir Adamawa these days? Um, that someone from that part of the country, like Ahmed Lawan, is the right person to match him. Otherwise, any candidate from the south would be toast, uh, as far as Atiku is concerned. Um. Uh, Kofi, I, I had already done this analysis. I I told you this, you know, even before now. The, the, unless you propose of emphasis or redundant, but I have done the analysis. I said one. <laughs> we are talking of unity. We are talking of oneness. We are talking of fairness, equity, and justice. Now, even if you talk of majoritarianism, I talked of spread. If you like, have 21 billion votes from the north. If you don't have the spread, you cannot be declared a winner. That is one. And so if the south should deny you that spread, you can't elect. That is what there has to be a real election. Number two, no single northerner. I believe that the most popular northerner today that is a sitting governor in Zulu. No single northerner today can arrogate himself the clouds were very high in the north, which was an advantage to him in 2014, 2015, and 2019. 
That is number two. Number three, you have Texas Northern governors in support of a Southern candidate. We are talking of governors. We are not talking of ministers. We are not talking of uh, commissioners. We are not talking of uh, advisors. We are not talking of national uh, legislators. We are talking of governors. And we are all seeds of the powers of the government. Texas Northern government are clamoring for a southern candidate. In the interest of the country, those 13 northern governors, not southern governors, these those 13 northern governors will work assiduously for the emergence of victory of a southern candidate at the polls. So what are we talking about? Hmm. All right. About so, so, so should, should, uh, the, should the northern governors so of the, of the All Progressives that, Congress... That argument yeah. is of ethnic of religion and poverty of love. In Okinawa and Kutaria, the South will support the South. So how? So how? 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 Mr. Kutaria, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, I'm just trying to ask you another question. Should the Southern Northern governors have gone a step further to say uh, Southeast, for instance, not just South? That is microzoning. If, if we're talking about, you know, if we're talking about, uh, <laughs> no, if, if we're talking about equity, we are talking about justice. My preferred, my, my, let me just answer your question. My preferred candidate is Rotimichi Gabich, no doubt. But then, if you also talk of equity, fairness, and justice, you talk of the Southeast. Now, propose your experience. The federal government might not be too comfortable. Because of IPOP and ESF. Although, another school of thought, another argument could be if it's handed over to the South, it's, it's going to placate them and ensure the cessation of hostilities by IPOP, ESF, uh, that these are reasons that have also been infiltrated by criminals. Because in, in most, uh, most uh, occasions, uh, IPOP has uh, dissociated itself from the crimes being committed. But that is one argument. Some would say to pacify them. Let us give it to the South. But again, most Nigerians will also be scared. When you give it to the South, what happens to IPOP and so on? But the issue is zone to the South. When you zone to the South, the South will now decide on which se section. When three form of the fall on two, the top most is better for the world. Zone into the South. Let it be a southern affair. And let it be the south south, the southwest, and the southeast struggling for who to be the uh, Mr. Nkotaria, Mr. Nkotaria, you, you've, you've said that let the south decide. But if you're talking about equity and fairness, so would argue you've already addressed this, that the southeast should have its turn. Another school of thought has it that, um, that those who have contributed the most to the All Progressives Congress in terms of votes at the presidential election um, should be the ones to take the lead. In this case, we're talking about the southwestern uh -huh. part of Nigeria. And those, the proponents of this school of thought, say that um, if you want to talk about the southeast, what have they contributed to the APC in terms of vote? That if you want to talk about the south-south, what have they contributed to the APC in terms of vote? That these are regions that have traditionally rejected uh, the, the APC at the presidential the elections, the while the southwest has traditionally... Uh -huh. Given the APC I, I, massive I, I, I votes. Yes. Your for one yes. Time. Now you talk of the Southwest. You have already a vice, sitting vice president there from the Southwest. If you talk of the South South, I'm talking about contribution now. Of course, we all know, even though the president has come out to say what is the contribution of, you know, he acknowledges the efforts of Tinibu, but sir, with the caveat. That not one man can do. Of course, not one man can do. Even a revolution is probably not led by more than one or two persons. But you can, somebody symbolizes that revolution. That is the truth about it. When you talk of June 2 of Aguila, Aguila, it wasn't just Aguila. We had a killing idea and so on. Aguila just symbolized it. Aguila could not have done it alone. In fact, June 2 got the problems with God and the death of NK Aguila. Now let's come to the South South. Not the meeting we are going to the DG of the campaign twice. And I'm an heir. I don't need to say what the, the, what the efforts you put in 
financial and other rights. A duty of the capital. So how can you say what is the South for the boot? If you want to start this, of course, they all need your contributors. Buhari couldn't have it. Buhari said the study vote from the South East was not for At least he got the spread. Without that spread, he wouldn't have been president. Now, I don't say all this. That is the point we are making. When you start, you know, when you said your vote, your, your whatever you get from the government will depend on the vote you give. And that uh, a comment was excoriated. Because once you met as a president, you're the president of the federal government, whether they voted for you or not, it's completely material. And that is why a lot of people believe that we are a barrier against the Southeast. That is the belief. Because of that comment he made, which was reckless, completely, absolutely reckless. He, a president should not say that. Now, having said this, Unless you are saying that because they did not contribute to the formation of the emergence of the... Open Abon Katara, we have to because let you go now because we're out of time. One minute, please, now. We don't have time. All right, then. Because Agga, Agga is part of... Agga, part of Agga was uh, also murdered. Agga, ACN, a new PDP, and Kovod of the 80s. So Agga is, is evil. Agga is southeast. So you cannot say that they did not contribute at all. Probably you're saying they did not contribute as much as this other one. But does that in any way mean that they are not citizens of this country? Does that in any way mean that they should be denied uh, 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 their rights and privileges in their country? Okay. The answer is uh, the Saudi no. Okay, so open up all the let's, let's leave it at this now. Of country, we should go beyond sentiment. All right. All right. I'm sure that we, have, we, we can have continue this conversation some other time. Thank you so much. I mean, you said that the answer is outrightly no, um, whatever the situation is, and we we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Okuna Bongotaria is a public affairs analyst, and we have been looking at the possibility of zoning the APC presidential ticket to the southern part of the country. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that is the size of a package on the breakfast. Uh, we apologize for the technical issues we earlier had, but um, uh, we promise to make it better tomorrow. Keep watching uh, Plus TV Africa up next and news at 9. And if you'd like to follow us online, Mercy. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. And do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Mercy Bobo. Have a fantastic day. And I'm Kofi Bertels. See you tomorrow.